Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this one we're going to take a look at doing some more hand tracking stuff, but we're going to look at setting up collisions for our fingers and hands and themselves. There's a couple of things to note that it mainly works better with overlap collisions, so you can't physically grab an actor. You could set up custom collision channels if you want to go that route. But in this one I'll show you how to set up the physics so we can push and poke stuff. But then I'll be disabling that so we can get generative hit responses which means if I touch the cube, it changes the material, or if I interact with something else, it does something based on the finger interactions themselves, which we can't do if they have solid collisions, apparently. Um, or at least I haven't been able to figure it out, and neither has Steros in the Discord, who originally figured out the, the better method for getting this to work. So the way I was approaching it was adding collision spheres to each individual bone, and then using that. However we can change that and we can get the collisions from the hands themselves. So if we jump in, we'll take a look through. Now what we want to do is we want to go to our begin play section and we're going to do a sequence because we're going to need to do this for both the left and right hand. So we're going to start by getting the Oculus XR hand left and then Oculus XR hand right. And then we can drag off these and we can search for initialize hand physics. So we can see that here. So we plug that into then one. I'm going to copy and paste this up above to then two and then plug in the hand like so. Skeleton type, we're going to set this to hand left and then skeleton type on the bottom one is hand right to match the input uh, variables. So with this done, we could actually jump in and I could show you how it's affecting the hands. We'll have issues teleporting because the collision is technically inside of it. So if I just do it a couple of times to get close. Go up to one of the cubes, and then if I poke one, you can see that I can use my index finger and the rest of my hands to actually move it around. We're going to disable this. We're going to stop this from happening because we want to use the overlap events. If anybody can figure out a way to do this, I'd love to know. So we can have the hit, res the hit, generate hit res event, and the overlap would be wicked. But in this case, we're going to select Oculus XR hand left and Oculus XR hand right at the same time. And then for the collision presets, we want to change this from no collision to overlap all. And then we can set this back to compile. So if we jump in now and we test it, hopefully we should still be able to teleport. If not, we might have to move that arrow forward. Yeah, we've got to fix that arrow. But now my hands pass through the actors again. So let's sort out our arrow for teleporting so we can actually do that. And I'm going to move that to the right. Yeah, I believe it's right. Have I moved it the right way or backwards? Let's have a quick look. Might as well fix it as they come up. Nope, wrong way. Let's have a look. Definitely not the right way. There we go. So I just had to move it further forward than I thought. Okay, so the teleport arrow is now at this weird location. So you can, you can kind of read that. <laughs> And move it forward if you need to. Okay, so now in the event graph, what we can do is we can actually set up these collisions. So what we're doing here is we've basically built collisions around each bone, and we can get access to those. So for each loop, we're going to do this on both. And just to reiterate, this is a thanks to Steros 19, 1981 on the Discord, who managed to figure out the code and get this all working. So I'm gonna pop this in there because it is a lot cleaner than what I was originally coming up with and we can use this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to break the results from both of these, plug it in like so. And then we're gonna use the bone ID as a switch. So I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. I'm gonna change the code around slightly, but we're gonna plug these in like so. So what's happening is we generate physics on our hands. We loop through each individual collision. We get the bone ID and then we check to see which part we're on. So in this case, the capsule, instead of doing the whole hand, we could do promote to variable. And let's just name this one left index. I think I'm on the left hand. Yeah, left index finger. Drag this in. And then we can connect this to index three. So you can see how we can go through and we can kind of repeat this. So left index finger. I'm going to duplicate this. And then we'll have right index finger. I'll only do the two fingers for now because it just saves a little bit of time. You can kind of go through and do the rest of them. So we're going to set the right index finger to the bottom section. So index three to there and then capsule. Then we plug that in like so. So what we've done now is we've got a reference to the, coll the collision around our bone or out our hand's index finger. 
And then what we can do is we can listen to that to see if it's been overlapped. So we can drag off and we can do assign. And this is an event dispatcher, so assign on overlap. So we drag up, begin overlap. So assign on component, begin overlap. And then we'll rename this function to index index finger overlap. So we can keep track of it a little bit easier. Because as you can imagine, you have a lot of these. And then what we do is maybe just clean this up by doing event dispatcher, create event. There we go. And then we can do the same thing for this one. Sign on component, begin overlap. And then if we just take this name, control C, let's paste this in here. Left index, create event. Cool. So we want left index finger overlap for this. And then for the top one, right index finger overlap. So now we have these two events, which we can actually listen for. We can have them do stuff for us. So we can test them to begin with by doing a print string. So we print string, and we can have this as right index, and then we can copy and paste this to do left index. So left index, compile, save. Then when we hop in, when we go up, we should be able to poke it. And then in the top left, we can see that we've got left index is on our right hand, and then right index is on our left hand. So I've got those the wrong way around. So right index, right index, right index. Here we go. Right index, left index. So now we can actually detect when our finger's touching an actor and we can send information through to it. So if you've got a button, you could pass through a blueprint interface. You say, okay, finger is over this button. Now trigger it to do something. As an example of this, what we could do is we could change the material of the cube. We could create a blueprint interface. So blueprint, blueprint interface, BPI underscore hand tracking. And then if we open this one up, we can then do finger collision. It doesn't have to be an exact finger. We're just gonna use the same one. So finger collision. And then in the VR pawn, what we could do is we can get other actor. We drag off and do finger collision message. So we're gonna send a message to the other actor that we're touching with the say finger collision. So do the same thing down here. And then what we can do is we can also go to our cube. Let's say grabble small cube. We can go to class settings and then we can go to implement interface and find BPI hand tracking. So with that done, we can hit compile and that's going to give us a finger collision event. So we can do event finger collision and we'll do a flip flop. So if we touch it once, it's going to trigger the A, and then when we touch it again, it's going to trigger B. And so I don't forget, we'll do a retriggerable delay. So we just slow it down so it doesn't constantly fire 100%. So two should be fine. And then we can get the static mesh cube as a reference, and we're going to set material. Put that into A, and then the material, we actually have a cube material instance cubes that provide for us i'm going to say change it to red and then once when we're done so tr figures triggers b on the second touch we're going to set the material back to the original which is material instance or one cool so now if we hop back into the vr template we can go up to it for our hands we can pinch swipe we can teleport we can then go up and we can touch and we can actually change the color of that cube. And then we can also pick it up with our inputs like so. Cool. So yeah, hopefully that one is a helpful video. And honestly, again, a big shout out to Steros1981 on the Patreon and Discord. Because the way that I was doing this previously was an absolute nightmare. It was going to have a whole bunch of components in the list to detect finger overlaps, that kind of thing. Whereas this one, you can kind of just go through and make individual variables with dispatches for each one and keep it a lot tidier and handle it handle it through the code itself. So you can have as much control of you over it as you want. What you can do as well, you can also play around with the collisions on the hands just to make sure that if you want the collision to go back to fully blocked, essentially just set the collision preset back to default, no collision. So set it to no collision, and then it will put that collision back on there. Uh, we're just going to leave it on overlap all for now. But for now, that's pretty much it. And then we can comment this out. So collision to our fingers and detect overlap. Cool. And then we can have them go like so.
So if you want to extend this, it's just a case of creating a new collision variable for each part uh, or each one of these outputs. Make sure it plugs straight into the capsule as well. They're all going to go into the same one. And then you can read this out as it goes through. So yeah, so that's it. If you enjoyed this video, or if you've got any ideas for some more, you want to see the hand tracking stuff taken a little bit further, please let me know in the, the comments. And if you're not already, you can head over to the Discord to ask any questions and Patreon and YouTube members to download the files and get access to everything else a little bit early than everyone else. Cool. So big shout out to everybody over on Patreon and YouTube members. See your names now. And I will see you all later on. Bye.